Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 3D LED cat garden ornament. So this is a three-dimensional garden ornament made with tumbled glass and wire. First of all, you're going to create a wire mold over a silicon ball and then you're going to solder it together. So I use a silicon ball that you buy usually to make resin molds and I fill it with stuffing so it's it's pretty stiff so I can pin stuff to it and use it as a nice form to work with be able to remove it later on. Now to make my wires stay in place I actually stab them into the mold and I will remove them later as I will show you. Now you can see I have some crystals that I'm planning on using and I use 16 gauge bare copper wire to make the shape of my kitty cat head. Now that yellow thing up in the air, that yellowish orange thing, is my fume exhauster. So yeah, it gets in the way at times, but you do want to use some type of fume exhauster so you don't get sick from the fumes of soldering. I use a gel flux to um, as flux and 60-40 10 lead solder. This is the kind of techniques you would use when doing stained glass. You can use a liquid flux if you want to, but liquid flux seems to um, run and drip a lot more, so I like to use the gel flux. Now those eyeball crystals are just set there temporarily on um, just straight pins, just so I can see where I'm going to put my eyeballs later on. So I'm putting flux in areas and I am just soldering together my armature that I made with wire. At the top you can see a round circle that is a hoop, the kind of hoop that you would use for like macrame or dream catchers, that kind of hoop. It's a bot hoop. You can make your own if you want to, but it's just a metal circle. And then I wrapped foil. Uh, I used three, sec three thirty second inch wide foil. I wrapped that around any metal that I use in a project that's not going to um, accept solder. So the, um, the macrame type hoops that you buy um, need to be wrapped. Now I'm going to add tumbled sea glass. Now there's different types of sea glass. So you start out with your natural sea glass. This is stuff that you'd find on the beach. It's usually kind of pebbled, and, but it's smooth. This is bought sea glass that you can buy at a store. It's not very smooth. This is raw flat glass, like just like extra chips that you have hanging around. Now, once you tumble that bought sea glass, you get nice um, irregular shaped pieces of glass. Tumbled flat glass will be very um, uniformly wide. So it's, it looks about the same when you're done tumbling it, but it won't have that um, uneven three-dimensional um, shape that you get when you use the, um, the sea glass. So that's how I tell the difference between, between glass. So what I'm doing is I'm, I tumbled a whole bunch of white um, sea glass. So it wasn't real sea glass. It was the bought kind of manufactured that I tumbled. Um, and it gets a nice frosted look to it, but it's really quite smooth. And I just kind of figure out which one I want to put where. It's gonna, this is going to be an uneven um, kitty cat. She's not going to be like, like the pieces aren't going to be all the same size. They're going to be different um, depths and thicknesses. The solder itself is going to be chunky and not perfectly smooth. But this is a Halloween kitty cat, um, and all of those things add to her. And I'm going to end up using black patina when I'm done because, hey, it's Halloween. It needs to be spooky. Now, I'm using a plastic um, FID type of, of pointer thing, and I'm using that at times to help hold the sea glass the right 
um, distance away from the, the armature that I had made. And you can also see that I stab pins in it. I use push pins. I use all different things to, to make it work. Now, the, remember, with the silicon, you can pin stuff in, and then after that, you can um, take the pins out, and the, the ball or whatever silicon space you use to begin with, it doesn't start falling apart. Um, it can take, you can use this again and again and again. So that's really cool. So don't worry about stabbing it with wires and stabbing it with pins. It'll, it'll be very forgiving. Because this is bare copper wire, solder takes to it really, really easily. So I can solder my foiled, wrapped, um, tumbled glass right to the armature wire, um, and it'll stick very nicely. Now for foiling my glass, I use the 7 32nds inch, um, usually black backed, um, foil so that if if I end up seeing through the glass afterwards, I won't have that copper shine because it'll be the black back type. And um, I use that and I, I usually take the copper foil and I cut it to the width that I want. I don't always use a full thickness of the um, of the the foil because it would wrap around the glass too much for my taste and it would, um, you know, I have enough gaps between them that's going to be enough black soldered areas. I don't want that extra, <coughs> that extra um, line that you'd get if I wrapped around it. It would be a very thick barrier between them all. So I usually take my foil and I'm only going to use like a half of the of the thickness of the foil. Sometimes I use a quarter thickness and sometimes I use even less than that. So I take scissors and I just cut it the width that I want and wrap my, um, my object with that and then I burnish it down with, with that black fid thing, plastic um, pointer thing, which works very nicely. And I'll, I'll put the, um, the information on what these what these objects are that I use on my description page so you can see you know what I'm using so I'm going to have to put solder eventually on that top ring that I that what I call the macrame ring at the top um, that's been wrapped in foil and I'm going to have to put solder on that and I'm going to have to fill any gaps between the um, glass with solder. Now, yes, yeah, sometimes I do decide that it's okay to have gaps between the things. It's really whatever you want for a final look. Um, this particular thing, I'm going to have these um, pretty much clear, frosted clear um, glass, um, tumbled glass, sea glass type stones, and I don't really want to have um, bright light um, shining between them. So I'm going to make it solid. So I'm going to, any gaps that I have, I'm going to have to fill. So I'm going to try to make these, these um, the gaps as minimum as possible so that I don't have to, you know, use tons of solder and have tons of, um, you know, kind of clumpy black solder in the way. Now, as you can see, I held all the, um, the wire to the silicon um, ball. I, use, I just kind of stabbed them in. So as I'm going, I'm going to have to take those off, but I'll show you that in a minute. So this is another piece of, of my sea glass, and I'm, I'm soldering it around for the, for the face. So I'm not keeping with the um, spherical shape of the ball. As you can see, my armature does have a profile for the kitty cat's mouth. It's going to stick out a little bit. So I'm, I'm using some stones um, to hold that in place. 
Now, I usually will tumble like a real lot of um, pieces of glass. I like to start off with lots and lots of um, opportunities to choose from. So, see that, that was a straight pin. So I'm using pins in place to, to hold things when I need to. Um, but I like to have a whole bunch of pieces of glass. So I, I have lots to choose from. Whoops. It's a little tricky to hold things in place. I, I do use silicon washers at times to, to help hold things up. I use push pins, straight pins. Um, sometimes I put extra fabric behind things to help hold, hold the shape as before I solder. And then it, once you tack it in place, you can then go back and, um, and fill in the gaps. Now remember that the glass has been foiled with a very thin line of foil. So don't heat it up a lot or it will not, um, it'll just come off because it's really only stuck onto the glass with that sticky stuff that's on the back of the foil. And the solder doesn't really wrap around the glass that much because I purposely didn't make the foil wrap around a lot. So it's not extremely sturdy. Now, when you do um, foil glass by wrapping around the glass a lot, like um, normal stained glass would do, um, it does end up, the, the solder ends up wrapping around the glass also. So it makes it a lot stronger. So you can see I have a, a bunch of stuff to choose from there. Now I'm going to remove the supporting wire as I go along because I don't want to end up soldering that wire that went through the, um, the ball to my project. So I want to remove that wire as I go along. So you can see like I, I have this little mouthpiece that are made out of two different pieces. I soldered them together nicely and then I cut the wire that actually went through the ball and then pulled it out because now I have that that mouth shape. I supported it with solder and the glass above so I don't need it to be going through my ball any longer. So now I can just take it off and now it's it's um, just free. It's just it's just sitting there. So here again, you're going to be, you know, going through your, your pile of glass that you have and try to find a piece that fits fine. Now, of course, yes, you could go and cut this, these pieces of glass um, perfectly with your, with your saw and then, and then or, or your hand, um, saw, hand um, glass cutter and then tumble them again um, to make them fit perfectly but of course you know that would take absolutely forever if you cut each one as you went and you really can't um, decide beforehand exactly what the shape should be to pre-do them so you're pretty much stuck with this idea of having a bunch of different shapes and just try to find one that fits nicely and I usually try to fill these gaps um, with solder as I go along or I come back later and fill them. Now, when you're trying to fill gaps, notice that I'm going from one to another because if you heat up one gap too much, um, it's just gonna open up again. So what you really need to do is let the gap cool down. I'm using some old solder right there, some, some extra pieces that was on the table. What you need to do is let the solder cool down and then when you add um, solder to it, you're, you're not like reheating all the solder. You're just um, trying to make it attached to the top layer of solder. And you're, you're trying to, and then try to smooth it out afterwards. So that way you filled the gap and the light's not going to go through it anymore. So as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to fill a gap of solder. My um, solder tip is getting a little bit kind of kind of gross right there. Um, periodically, you really need to clean off your um, your solder tip so that it isn't quite so grody. There we go. 
So now those pieces are filled up and light won't go through them. And once I put black patina on the whole thing, I'll just end up with black lines where between each piece of glass. Now, number four, I'm going to replace the forms when needed. Okay, so what I'm talking about right here is my ears did not end up being exactly the same size. One of them was just too small. So what I decided was to take it off and then add a new ear. And so this is fine. If your form ends up not working perfectly, you can um, adjust as you go along, like I'm doing right now. I just put a new ear on and I'm just soldering it in place. Um, it's sometimes hard to, to, to make your original form exactly like you want and, and you decide you want to fix things. Because I decided that the back of my ear is going to be um, with the, the clear glass and then I'm going to use pink glass on the inside. So I have lots of pieces of, um, of sea glass. Some of it is flat. Most of it is the three-dimensional bought sea glass shapes. And then I tumbled them. But I did add in some flat, um, clear glass that I tumbled also. So it's kind of a variety of glass that I had and bought. And again, I am trying to fill... I want all the copper uh, foil to be completely soldered and I want the gaps to be filled. And basically I just keep going and keep going and keep going until I am done. It's going to take a while to get all the pieces done. Now as I'm getting toward the end, um, I decided that I'm going to have to put some small pieces between because they, I didn't have pieces that were exactly the right shape or the right size. So what I did toward the end was I kind of like filled in as much as I could the way it was. And then I decided I was going to, um, to take the ball off, clean it, and then work on it again. Now, every time I stopped for a while soldering, I did wash the, um, the cat completely. So you want to clean it with, um, usually I use Dawn soap, um, but the, the important thing is, is, to, is to keep it pretty clean. You don't want the solder uh, the flux actually is, is the problem to sit on your project very long. You know, I mean, yeah, you, you can leave it there for a few days if you want to, but it's easier to get the flux off if it's only been there for a few hours. So you can really, really get it off completely. And you're going to want it off because the, the patina will not stick to your project if you have flux left on it. Um, so you, you really want to get it as clean as possible. As you can see, sometimes it's kind of tricky to find a piece that you, you like to fit in a spot. That's, that's just the way life is. Oh, that one kind of fits. You can't um, be really, really, really picky. You can, um, unless you have like hundreds of pieces of glass, you're going to have to deal with um, you know, that's close enough kind of attitude. But that's okay. We can just fill that in. And, and as I go, um, I kind of fix other areas. And you can see that the top right-hand area there, um, it's not as slimy and fluxy. That's because that area was washed at one point. And you can also see that right now I'm using silicon gloves. Silicon gloves are awesome because they help dissipate the heat so you don't get burned as easily. So you can, um, you can hold the glass a little bit before you, you know, get too hot. And it also keeps the flux um, off your hands so they don't start feeling kind of icky. So yeah, I would, silicon gloves are just awesome. 
Okay, number five, I'm gonna remove the silicon form. So the silicon form, again, is that round um, form that I bought, and I'm going to take that off. So I have most of it covered in glass. I have the basic shape at the bottom. There's still some holes, and I'm going to take, that piece of plastic was there just to kind of um, make it so that my stuffing didn't get all icky with flux and water when I cleaned it. So I took that um, the stuffing out of it. And now I got to try to get that ball out. And sometimes that's kind of tricky. So I found if I just take a pair of needle nose pliers and kind of like turn it into a ball, I can kind of like twist and pull it out. Now, the, the ball, this, those silicon balls that you buy are really quite sturdy. And you can use this ball, as I said before, again and again. It's sometimes kind of tricky to get it out of your project, but I know it will work. There it goes. So that ball can be used again, and my cat is now the correct shape. Now I'm gonna remove the excess solder from the inside and I'm gonna to touch up some missing areas on the outside. So while I have it still um, pretty accessible, and you can see I've used some, some different silicon washers that are floating around in there to hold the glass in different areas. So I'm going around the inside and any big globs that happen to form or uh, messes of solder that went and sat on the um, a, a piece of glass. I am removing those pieces of extra solder and the extra blobs that happen to be there. And I'm making sure there's no silicon washers left inside of it. So I'm doing that. And then I'm also going to go around the outside and I'm going to touch up the outside wherever I can see foil still. So you can see I'm, I'm still touching up the inside there. And I'm gonna keep all those globs of solder on, the, um, on my work table there. I will use those for other, other times I need pieces of solder. So I'm not going to throw those pieces away See, I'm using extra pieces right there. So I want to have like those seams in the ears to be completely full. Um, so I'm going to use some solder to fill those extra um, gaps that have um, not been filled yet. See, there, there we go. So that's gonna be like a big black fat line there when it's done. You can see I've already added some flux to some areas because that's that, that gooey, shiny look right there on the ear. Um, one of the th things that's good about having these extra pieces of, of solder on the table is they're very easy just to scoop up one little drop um, of solder and you don't need to have two hands to help hold that um, the piece where you're going. You can see right there I have some small pieces of glass now that I'm going to use and I am um, I'm putting those in in the spaces where there are bigger gaps and I, I really don't want to fill a gap that big with solder so I foiled some smaller pieces of tumble glass and I'm coming back and adding those smaller pieces to um, some holes that I have left. So I'm going to add glass to the open areas. This is what I was just, just starting to do in the last um, segment. So I have a bunch of smaller pieces that I have foiled and I'm going to hold them where I need a piece of um, where I need a piece of glass. Sometimes you need to remove some globs of solder where you've already started um, from the globs of solder created from the adjacent piece of sea glass. So sometimes you might have to remove that extra piece of solder in order to um, make a big enough space 
for the one that you found. So I'm I'm trying to to hold and and yeah, it's it's kind of tricky to hold the when you have a um, an open um, space like I have now. My since I don't have the circle there anymore, I don't have anything on the inside holding it out. I can put my hand inside of it to help hold the piece of um, glass. So sometimes I may have to do that. I can't use push pins because there's nothing to pin it to now. But because this particular um, project has irregular pieces of glass that stick out in all different directions, if my glass um, is not completely smooth and actually sticks out in one place, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, that piece kind of fell fell through the hole. <laughs> Whoops, fell through again. So yeah, that might happen. So the tweezers, How the, will the tweezers hold it in place is a good question. Um, and yes, I, I believe that piece will look great if I can just hold it correctly while I am soldering. So sometimes it's a little bit um, tricky to get it to, to be in the space you want, but that's okay. And as I said, it's, it's, uh, for this particular project, if it's not um, flush with the two outside pieces, it's not the end of the world because all the glass is, or most of the glass is like three-dimensional and um, not smooth anyway. So a piece of glass that is almost like sitting on top in one area is not going to look weird when I am done with the project. It is kind of um, kind of hard to find pieces that, that fit where you want them to, but don't give up. Um, it's worth trying to, trying to do the little details correctly. And you could see that I kind of held that in place by pushing down on it with the tweezers. If your solder um, pieces on, the, on your table are, are really getting small, I would suggest not holding them, but just use tweezers to hold them in place or they're just going to be too hot to handle. So I'm getting almost to the end of this this step where I have to fill these gaps. And there's another one that will look fine when it's done. And then I will kind of blend it with the ones around the that particular space. Just kind of like try to smooth it out so it's not too chunky. Now we're going to cut the eyes. So the eyes itself are just like little spaces, you know, wire spaces, as you saw, that I'm going to put a crystal in them. So in order to get the right shape, I'm using a piece of paper and a very um, thin, like, automatic pencil so that it's really quite, um, quite accurate. And I am cutting out my template. And then I'm making sure that, oh, yeah, it does look like it's going to work fine. Now, I'm using black glass because these are cat's eyes, and I decided they're going to be completely black and opaque. And you want to use um, a marker that's going to be seen on, on the particular glass color you're using. So I'm actually using a white um, kind of paint marker, which wasn't overly successful because it's kind of runny, but it worked fine. So I cut it out, I drew it, and then I used my, um, my ring saw and cut the shape made sure that the glass in fact did fit um, just as needed and now I am figuring out the size for the green crystal. So I cut those out also on my ring saw and I have those those pieces now and yeah that looks pretty good but before I actually um, do this 
foil it together and all, I decided I'm going to make a copy of it on paper so that for the other eyeball, it's pretty much um, symmetrical. It's gonna look pretty much the same. Now, of course, I, I have to um, make a pattern for the other eye because they're not identical, but at least this way, if I need to go back and see how big the black areas were, et cetera, I do have a drawing of it. Now, right now I'm trying to hold the glass on the left, the right height to be able to solder to the crystal. And as you could see, I decided three layers of paper kind of is the right, right thickness to hold it up in the air. So I soldered the crystal to one half of my um, eyeball. Now I'm holding it in place and soldering that one half of the eyeball to my kitty cat head. And then I'm making sure the other side will in fact fit. And it does, it fits very nicely. And I'm gonna kind of hold it in place. And I'm luckily it kind of like stays in place itself. And then I'm using solder to solder it together. So yeah, it still looks kind of clumpy and that's just the way this is going to be. Um, I'm gonna make it kind of smooth once I fill it all in. And remember, it's gonna be black. Also, when it's done, it'll look awesome. I don't wanna have any cracks around this um, eye because I don't want light to come around him. So that eye is now finished. And yeah, it does have that hole in the top of each crystal where you would use it like for a bead, but I'm gonna think of that as just like a little highlight. So that'll be fine. Now I have my eyes done. Now I wanted to add teeth to it because I mean, this is Halloween and this cat is like too, happy and sweet looking. So I did some research on what cat teeth look like and cut out of opaque white glass some daggered teeth. This particular tooth, I wrapped the bottom of it in a piece of um, foil. So these are for the bottom teeth because I had lots of space to be able to kind of like overlap them into the inside of the mouth. So I put some teeth in there that way. By, so I wrapped one end of the, um, of the teeth with foil and then put them in that way. Now the top teeth, one of them I didn't have enough room to because there's a stone there. I mean, well, not a stone, but a tumbled piece of glass there. I didn't have enough room to be able to overlap it. So what I did was I took my teeth and I, um, with my ring saw again, I made like little notches on them and wrapped the um, tooth with a piece of wire around those notches. So the, the notches on each side of the um, tooth was just so that the wire had something to hang on to. And so now I have like, I, I use some thin wire, like 26 gauge or something you know, something that's not terribly um, thick and wrapped, as you can see right there, I wrapped the wire around those notches and that's what's going to hold my tooth in place. Now I'm gonna end up filling the gap that's left with solder and so it'll end up with these, with these teeth. They almost look like, um, like, big cat tooth teeth like cyber tooth um saber tooth you know wild cats as as opposed to your your household kitty cats um so he's not a very tame cat now and of course these glass um teeth are very sharp so you don't want to touch them now because because they're not wrapped or um sanded or anything smooth they are you know kind of kind of dangerous, but that's okay because it's Halloween and um, there's, I want them to look kind of deadly. So I soldered them in place 
And now the soldering's complete. I also add, added some whiskers to the cat to, um, to add to its, its final look. So this is the cat. So he has some, and I added some pink um, glass on the inside of his mouth. Now I'm gonna add the black patina to him. And I usually spray, for a three-dimensional object like this, I spray it on with a spray bottle. And then I move around what's left with, um, with a used toothbrush. So the spray will, will, will get to lots of crevices in different directions. And it's a very misty spray so that I'm not using very much patina at all. But as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. I'm doing it outside. Um, because patina is really dangerous, hazardous stuff that you do not want to breathe in or get on you. And now I'm, I'm in the bathroom. I am rinsing my kitty cat off with um, just usually cold water and some more Dawn dishwashing soap. That's what those bubbles were. So that I am actually cleaning off any residue patina. Now, now you need to polish it. There's all different theories on how to polish it and what um, substances to use. Lately, I've been using um, just some linseed oil, which seems to be kind of easy to use and, um, and kind of fast. So I put the linseed oil on all the solder joints and then I, I clean it off. So right now I'm just brushing the um, linseed oil on, on all the solder joints and it, it makes the solder um, shiny and not so dull and, um, and blah looking. So it really, really helps shine it up. And now I'm all done and I'm gonna hang up, hang it up. You can use it inside or outside, however you want. I put an, an LED um, light on top and you can see I added some little um, hooks on him so I have something to hold him with. And he's kind of silly looking, but remember you're gonna look at him from a distance most of the time. That's what he looks like outside. That's the side version of, um, of the ball hanging from a tree. And he looks really cute. And at night he lights up nicely, a little bit scary. And I just, was very happy with the way he turned out. So he started off um, like this when he's in the daytime and he looks like this at night when he's when he's glowing. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween.